the best evidence for Jesus being Yahweh. If you know how to present them, these are the best hard-hitting arguments. Point number one, Jesus must be Yahweh to be able to save his people from their sins because Psalm 130, the Old Testament as a whole, and Jesus himself says, it is Yahweh who saves from sin and saves his people from their sins and that humans cannot save themselves, let alone others. Let's read. Let's begin. Matthew 1, 21, 23. And she will bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus. Now, here's what you always need to focus. When you have the next line saying for or because, that means it's going to explain the previous line. So now it's going to explain why Joseph has to call him Jesus. You got to call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Well, what's the connection? Why is Jesus called Jesus? Because he will save his people from their sins. Well, what's the connection between Jesus saving his people from their sins and the name? Yesun, that's the accusative. Yesus. 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 Yesun, accusative. Well, what does that mean? Well, here you go. Strongs. Let's see what it means. Jesus or Joshua, the name of the Messiah, also three other Israelites. Now, Jesus or Joshua, the name of the Messiah, also three other Israelites. Jesus, the Greek form of Joshua, Yehoshua. Okay, what does that mean? Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. You see what the name means? Yahweh is salvation. So you see what the angel is saying? He's saying the male baby born, Mary is conceiving and will give birth to a male baby. This male baby boy is Yahweh is salvation. It's telling you the Holy Spirit conceived the physical body, the human nature of Yahweh, the God of Israel from the virgin womb of Mary so that Mary for nine months was carrying Yahweh God Almighty in his fullness in her belly because he was becoming human from her belly, from her womb. And so she gave birth to Yahweh is salvation. So now let's go back to see the connection. Call his name Jesus because he does this. Are you making the connection? The reason why he saves his people from their sins is because he's Yahweh Almighty because only Yahweh and Yahweh alone saves his people from their sins. Now, any Jew who knows the Old Testament would be shocked at this. Do you know why? Well, let me show you the Old Testament. Now watch the connection with Jesus. O Israel, wait for Yahweh. Hope in Yahweh. For with Yahweh there's loving kindness. You see? Loving kindness. With him is abundant redemption. Now watch. And it is he who will redeem Israel, his people, from all his iniquities. Wait. It is Yahweh who saves his people from their sins. But the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew has begun his gospel by announcing that Jesus is Yahweh Almighty in the flesh. Again, notice, the virgin gives birth to a son who comes to save his people from their sins, which is why his name is Jesus. Yahweh is salvation. For Jesus to save his people from their sins, he has to be Yahweh. He cannot be a creature. He cannot be merely human. Why? Because we read Psalm 130, but now let's read the words of our Lord. Matthew 19, 25, 26. And when the disciples heard this, they were very astonished and said, then who can be saved? Now watch. Looking at them, Jesus said to them, with people, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Okay, now help me, guys. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. If Jesus is clear that it is humanly impossible to bring about salvation, men cannot save themselves, let alone others. That's impossible. That's why God has to say, because he can do what is impossible for men. So let me ask you a question. If Jesus is a creature or he's a merely a man, how can he save multitudes from their sins when the Lord just said, Jesus himself just said, with people, this is impossible. 
Men cannot save themselves, let alone others. That's impossible for them. That's why God has to save, because he can do what is impossible for men. Then how does Jesus do the impossible if he's just a man? It's what the Unitarians won't answer. Now, again, since Jesus said, it is humanly impossible for men to save themselves, let alone others, how can the angel say, Jesus comes to save his people from their sins? Well, because he's Yahweh who saves. Are we getting it? Did we make that first point? Now, the second evidence that he is Yahweh in the flesh. Watch here. Now, all this took place in order that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, Matthew tells you what it means. Emmanu, Emman, with U, us, is Il. This is the Hebrew word for God, Il, which translated means God with us. The virgin is giving birth to God with us. But here's what you don't see in the English. All right. So she gives birth to Emmanuel, which means Himon o Theos. It's not simply with us, God. It's actually with us is the God. The God. All right. We got it? I'm not going to prove to you that Matthew is saying that Jesus is himself the God. Scholars have discovered certain patterns in the books of the Bible. They have discovered a literary device known as inclusio, or what is known as a bookend. You got to remember this. You'll find it in the Bible, specifically in New Testament. This is a literary feature where the writer will conclude a section or his book by hammering, reiterating, reemphasizing the point he makes at the beginning. Now, if you remember this, now watch. This is the beginning. So he says that Jesus, being born of the virgin, fulfills that he's God with us. All right. God with us. To refute the heretics who say, no, 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 no. This doesn't mean Jesus is God. It means that Jesus was sent by God as a sign that the God of heaven is with his people. That's what they'll tell you. But let me show you how to bury it. You go to the end of Matthew, Matthew 28, 20. The last verse of Matthew is Jesus saying, teaching them to, com com to keep all that I command you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see it? That's the bookend. That's the inclusio. Matthew ends it by having Jesus affirm he will remain with us to the end of the age. So how did he start it? Let's look. He began by saying, this is the gospel announcing the fact that the Holy Virgin, by the Holy Spirit, gave birth to God with us. God came to be physically with us in a physical body as a man without ceasing to be God. But let me give you good news. Though physically he left, he has promised that though physically he's not with us, by virtue of being God, he is still present with us and he won't leave. But you catch the implication, right? How wondrous is it that Matthew began his gospel by telling you Jesus is Yahweh, Almighty, who now has chosen to be conceived in a womb of a woman, giving this woman the honor of containing the true God of Israel in all his fullness because he's taking flesh from her flesh, bones from her bones, his DNA from her DNA, his blood from her blood because there was no male that was involved.